learning not only the pieces of knowledge, but the additional tools that are dearly needed in order to be active, thriving components in today's and tomorrow's society is key. And evidently, current academic and educational institutions are not up to the job. Gamification, learn to earn, and other components in moving to a decentralized system can be the solution to achieve what is needed. My name is David Orban, and this is The Context. Today I traveled to Bologna. It is the seat of one of the oldest universities in the world. Founded 800 years ago, the University of Bologna is a wonderful institution. Established in order to uh, teach and promote and maintain the type of knowledge and the type of education uh, that uh, has been uh, moved to the highest uh, levels of admiration uh, over the centuries, together with almost every other institution of higher education, it is struggling to find its proper role in today's world. How many young people that you also know are enrolling in college, not only because it is what is required from them by their families and the various social group exerting pressure on them, but also because they actually don't know what else to do. And society gives them great incentives for this. For the next three, four, five years, they will study under the assumption that the investment they make will be a positive one for their future. In the United States, especially, college education is becoming unaffordable to many. But rather than re-examining the role and the structure of college education, more and more students get into unaffordable levels of indebtedness. Banks are very happy to extend a loan to students, $100,000. And then over the course of the next 20 years, the capital principal and the interests of course, have to be paid back, burdening from the start of their careers people with uh, the kind of obligations that should not come from their desire of acquiring the knowledge and the tools that they need, they should need to thrive in today's world. Of course, Learning is wonderful, as well as the social signal that comes with achieving uh, and acquiring a given title, uh, the degree, the certification, the license, can be both extremely useful to participate in certain networks and circles, and oftentimes actually a requirement for practicing a certain type of profession. So what can be the alternatives that we should explore and then implement if we find them useful and adapt to our needs that are going to replace uh, the traditional college curriculum if we decide it is not up to the expectations of today's world? We know that 
traditional online learning cannot be it. We have the statistics over the course of the past 10 years and more that the completion rates of online courses are abysmal. Less than 10%, less than 5% of the people enrolling in online courses actually finish them. We need to find better ways to make sure that people have the right incentives to steal themselves, to apply the discipline they certainly have to go back and learn, to go back and interact and engage with communities of interest that are constituted by like-minded people. There are some signs of what these incentives could be. The gamification of certain activities works. And we don't have to think about reducing to uh, childish activities. What we need to understand is that the right nudges, the right prodding uh, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, can actually work. Also, the uh, smaller uh, atomic benefits, the little badges, uh, the little achievements of leveling up, these are all part of the experience that an increasing number of people have grown up with. Yes, uh, many of them come from video games, but the addictive nature of the video games is something that we can get inspired by if we want to implement similarly addictive incentives for the kind of activities that then can be deemed to be very fruitful rather than the way that we are generally labeling video games as being useless. On top of gamification, we now have examples of an increasingly interesting uh, application of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. On one hand, we have uh, the learn to earn set of activities. Similarly to play to earn, learn to earn literally pays you in order to acquire knowledge. And of course, it tests you. It will only give you the payment if you prove to have learned. Now, this isn't new either. There are countries where students get paid to learn. Uh, in Denmark, for example, uh, the equivalent of about a thousand dollars is paid to students enrolled in college. Learn to earn shrinks uh, the cycle of incentives from a monthly payment to a daily or an hourly payment depending on uh, the uh, characteristic of the learning modules. The other side of the blockchain application to education and learning is uh, the ability to uh, issue, analyze, and handle and manage the certifications themselves. In many cultures, uh, there is a, a real problem uh, about fake certificates. Blockchain-based certificates are close to impossible uh, to forge. And the ability of earning those certificates uh, is already uh, there, as well as further enhanced by their portability, their universal interoperable uh, ability to be recognized everywhere in the world. We have to make sure that not only the knowledge, but the tools with which we acquire and analyze knowledge 
are constantly upgraded. These are, of course, going to be based on artificial intelligence. We already use tools that sort and rank information for us. Whether it is a search engine like Google, where the results that we get uh, are uh, increasingly interactive. Some time ago, Google introduced uh, a literal uh, conversational interface. If you, uh, rather than searching for uh, a piece of factual information, when was Beethoven born, uh, you are asking a question from the search engine, like, what type of music does uh, or did rather Beethoven compose? Instead of receiving uh, the single answer, he was born this and this date, you will receive a series of complementary questions following a quote from a relevant source of, in the example, the type of music that he played. And these additional questions could be uh, what type of uh, uh, orchestra could play Beethoven's music, or how did Beethoven's music um, differ from those uh, of Mozart or Bach. And as interactively you explore the questions that you didn't know you could ask, suggested to you by Google, uh, the joy of finding out new pieces of knowledge uh, is extremely rewarding. The AI behind these interactive tools must be incorporated in our ability to explore knowledge. And there are already a large number of applications that uh, uh, incorporate them. Duolingo for learning languages is famous for its uh, uh, incentives. Uh, the owl prodding you to learn more, uh, the badges that you earn if you proceed every day. Khan Academy introduced uh, similar systems uh, in its uh, website and app as well. Blockchain promises the ability to make the badges transferable, transportable. Implementing them as NFTs will be a natural additional step. What will the next series of tools going to be? Well, you could be inspired by reading the book Diamond Age by Neil Stephenson. The same Neil Stephenson that in Snow Crash employed the term metaverse that is now inspiring us in so many ways. In Diamond Age, without too much of a spoiler, there's a young child as she grows up with a book, the book grows with her. And the kinds of knowledge and the kinds of wisdom that she can learn from the book very much resemble the tools that we will need in the future to be able to adapt to the challenges that we are going to face.